Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, GL's webinar this month and this month's webinar will be concerning um, GL's MAPS platform specifically for uh, location services. So I want to thank you all for coming and joining us today. Uh, my name again is, is Matt Yost. Um, I'll be sort of directing the webinar here and, and doing a first part of the webinar. I'm going to be handing off to Savita who will be helping us a little bit more with some of the details of um, the location services protocol. So what is location services? What are they? Um, so location services obviously provide a geographic location uh, of where a mobile device is. That's basically a Latin long information on where the mobile device is and, and a high level understanding of it. So, you know, where is that used? What are the applications for that? Here's a, here's a diagram that shows a very common application for how location services are used and it's within, you know, public safety emergency services. So, um, if you call in the U.S., if you call 911, um, and you're using your mobile phone. How does the dispatcher at the 911 at the PSAP understand where you are? Um, you know, so location services comes into play there. There's a lot more applications for it now. It's opening up in social networking and vehicle tracking and so much more uh, on how location services are used. But what we're going to do today is we're going to try to talk a little bit about what location services are here at the beginning, and then we'll kind of give you a little um, understanding of what the elements in the network that are involved in this and then how GL's product and how our MAPS product in particular can simulate these and help test these elements of the network. So the applications, as I mentioned before, uh, public safety is a big one. Uh, fire, police, and ambulance, you know, um, public safety, emergency services, they use uh, LCS uh, location services all the time. When you call from your mobile, um, you know, and they need to know where you are, and they need to relay that information to the right people to get to you fast. So other, other applications that are not as critical, but tracking services, stolen phones, things like that, vehicle tracking, and then other location-based services, um, include, you know, just from normal use of your cell phone or your mobile device, you know, you're out sightseeing or you want to um, you want to know what the traffic in the area is and things like that. So there's a lot of applications that are coming online here, especially with the with the um, improvement in the wireless networks where location services are going to be used. Typical um, network architecture for LCS. Uh, this is kind of showing you um, both, uh, all three, a 2G, a 3G, and a 4G uh, network diagram sort of rolled into one here. But uh, on the right-hand side, you can see an external LCS client. So in, in this diagram, what we're talking about there is who's asking for your location. So in our typical scenario here, when we're talking about like you're calling the 911 dispatch, so that would be the client, the 911 dispatch center, the PSAP they call it. So they want to know where you are. So they are now going to interface to uh, this uh, this gateway mobile location center. That's sort of the first line of, of interface there to the client. And then it will do its thing with um, within the protocol to go and try to find out through various methods where you are. And it depends on, you know, if you're in a 2G, 3G, or 4G network, uh, your handset types and so forth. And we'll get into some of the variabilities in those things as we as we move forward here. But this was a general network diagram, kind of shows you the different elements that are involved. Um, and again, we'll, we'll address some of these in a little bit more particular fashion here shortly. So th some of the key elements, uh, entities uh, for uh, LCS, um, I mentioned the, the Gateway Mobile Location Center, that's definitely one of them. Um, and you know it's sort of a central point in the architecture it's, it, and I mentioned it's the first node to a client sort of the external client interfaces directly with that as a first node uh, the ser the serving mobile location server is um, 
different called different things in the different um, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G networks, but essentially it's kind of doing the same thing there, and it's ser it's a server used uh, for location calculations and, and housing that that information. So at a top level, that's what those couple things are, and then you got an LMU, which is a location measuring unit that sort of resides at each of um, you know the cell towers in a sense. Okay, so those are some of the kind of big level elements of of these location services, and some of the, there's a lot more details underneath that, underneath these three things, but these are kind of the high level things that are, that we want to talk about at the moment. So when we talk about sort of how um, you know how 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 are you able to how is the network able and what methods are used to identify and to locate you? There are many methods that have been used out there over the years. Um, these all all these methods are sort of still in use today. Um, some some more than others. Some with particular networks, two um, G, three G, and four G, of course. And these kind of these methods are are generally categories. I like to categorize them as a network-based method. So the network's kind of locating you, or a handset-based method. So your mobile device itself has capabilities in it, and and has um, so nowadays most things have GPS in them. So that that would be one area where it's a handset-based method. So we'll talk a little bit about those. These these methods have different uh, varying accuracies. Um, kind of, I think they're in order now as I've listed them here, from the least accurate to the most accurate. And uh, we just wanted to kind of give you a little background here on the next few slides on what these methods were, and um, you know, just so that you have some understanding of how the the actual location gets sort of put into the network in a sense into the storage of the network and then we'll show you how our maps product and our maps LCS product has the ability to simulate and, and test some of these these elements within the network so let's briefly just go over some of these methods for you um, cell ID and um, um, the cell ID method basically and, and the timing advanced method um, so location is an estimate using uh, identification codes uh, assigned to each mobile subscriber. This is kind of a, a very, um, well, I'll say it's one of the least accurate methods here. Uh, timing advance uh, will reduce the, the positioning error. So when you introduce the timing advance portion of it, it reduces the positioning error and, error and provides a measure of distance between the mobile and the, the BTS. So there's some I'm not going to get into exactly all of the details of each of these methods I just wanted to sort of introduce them at a, at a top level for you because um, I, they're fairly interesting and they're also they, they sort of feed into the LCS the core of the network and, and how that location filters through uh, receive signal strength method uh, it's you know distance from each BTS to the mobile subscriber is approximated using the signal strength. So it's a signal strength based method, and uh, it's able to sort of triangulate that location of 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 the mobile subscriber. So a third method is the angle of arrival uh, method, and it basically uses the angles, um, the received angles of the signals arriving at the BTS. You need a, a, two BTS is to kind of get a, an approximation multiple or more or better um, you can do it with two but more or better so what what happens with this and one of the negatives of this method is a slight error in that in that angle will create a, a little bit a bigger error in where your mobile is so the in, the accuracy of it is a little bit hit if there's a slight error and you can uh, if you know geometry well you can figure that out fairly quickly so now we're getting into some some newer methods, I'll say, and um, more accurate methods. Time of arrival method is a network-based method. Um, this this is based on absolute time, we'll call it. So everything in this in this network has to be very synced up timing-wise, um, towers, mobiles, everything, and it's basing. Um, it's basing the location. It's it's trying to locate the the mobile based on this time, okay, for absolute time of things. 
um, in contrary, very similar method, but time difference of arrival method is very similar in the sense, but in this case, we're talking about using relative times, okay, um, to try to understand where this mobile is. All of them, uh, all methods, again, trying to locate the mobile, varying accuracies of these methods. This one um, in particular is being used uh, fairly often these days. Um, and again, it's a, it's a relative time based method. Now when we get into uh, the last couple here, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm going through them very quickly just so that we can get moving on to some of the, the more important things with this webinar. Um, you know our maps product and and how our maps product can help you um, in these in this environment so this enhanced observed time difference method this is um, a method that the BTS basically sends out a burst okay and then the mobile listens to it the difference between this method and the previous ones that I, I discussed is that this is a handset based method so um, previously I was talking about network um, based methods this is a handset based method so the towers the, the the BTS's are bursting and the mobile now listens to the bursts and records the time of arrivals and gets the information on where it is so that is um, and communicates with the mobile network to, to do that so it's an opposite direction of what we just talked about similar concepts but opposite direction and one of you know the more familiar ones to, to people nowadays are the assisted GPS method, and this is sort of the last one I want to talk about. But this is uh, mobile subscribers nowadays. Most of them are having uh, GPS built into the phone, so it's not a pure GPS method in the sense that it only relies on the GPS, but it does rely on GPS re, uh, satellites, but it's assisted with the mobile network as well. And how is it assisted? Well, it's assisted to sort of um, um, quickly uh, get quickly get access to where it is in a sense. It's, it's assisted in that sense. GPS typically is, if you go out cold with it, it may take 15 minutes to acquire where you are. This There's some assistance from the mobile network to help out that process to, to make it quicker and so forth um, with assisted GPS. Quick ac acquisition time, I should say. And that's helpful in um, you know some environments, urban environments in particular where there's some bouncing off of, of signals and so forth. Okay, so now, um, so these standard positioning methods that I just briefly described, you know, they're used in 2G, 3G, and 4G, as I mentioned earlier. Um, for a 2G network, the, the top bullet, um, typically we're using the timing advanced or the um, the enhanced observed time difference method sometimes you know and other times we're using uplink time difference of arrival so I just wanted to kind of give you a flavor of what methods are used for each network um, and you know this is a call it a uh, accurate list I mean there's probably some um, you could probably put an asterisk beside a couple of these but it's generally this is these are the methods that are used for the 2G, the 3G, and the 4G method um, networks out there. So in 3G, we're talking about the cell ID based method. The first one I talked about definitely supports assisted GPS and then um, time difference of arrival. Okay, so those are the standard things that are used. And within the 4G network, we're again talking about assisted GPS. Um, this also uses uh, receive signal strength to help out as well. And in, in 4G nowadays, we're, I, I just generically put there at the end, hybrid methods. So there are, you know, some varying, uh, pulling from multiple places there to help out. And that's basically all we need to talk about with that. Um, as I mentioned, uh, these methods have varying levels of accuracy. This chart basically shows that in brief. Uh, starting with the least accurate at the top, going down to a GPS at the bottom, and it also shows if it's a network-based method or a handset-based method. And then also on the on the far right column, you get to see sort of what kind of coverage you get and so forth. So just a summary of the of the methods um, for you with accuracy built into it, some numbers beside it. 
So now, um, getting into sort of the meat of, of our presentation, what I'm going to do at this point is, is give you an overview of what we call MAPS here at GL Communications. And what does MAPS stand for? Well, it stands for Message Automation Protocol Simulation. This is the base platform at GL. Um, you may or may not be aware of it, but uh, this is the base platform at GL. This is the base software that GL uses, the framework that GL uses to simulate, I'll just say at this point, simulate different protocols. Um, location services protocols and so forth are, are one of many that this MAPS framework has the ability to to uh, simulate. So it's it's widely used uh, in the telecom industry now. MAPS is, has been widely used and I'll give you some applications for it to kind of zero in on exactly how it's used and so forth here briefly. Um, what I want to do is kind of start out with giving you an overview of what MAPS is and how sort of that platform of MAPS um, and sort of the, the vastness of it. Um, again, we, we talk about 2G, 3G, and 4G. MAPS has the ability to simulate all of these different protocols from GSM to UMTS to LTE, diameter, so, so forth. Um, back in the TDM network, again, same platform, we can simulate SS7, ISDN, PRI, the different ones that you see on the screen there. And then in the VOIP network, you know, it's, it's fully supportive of SIP, um, SIGTRAN, MGCP, Megaco, and Skinny. So there, there's different things there. I just wanted to kind of show you that it's the same platform we're using. If, if an engineer of yours or a t technician of yours would um, would learn it for, let's say, SS7 or already has it for SS7, it's a very natural and easy move to um, GSM, okay? Uh, it's the same thing, it's just a slightly different protocol. So the, the ease of use of the product is, is already known, okay? So, um, and as I was mentioning here, you know, just to kind of reiterate that, I'd already said it, but, you know, you can see there are three screens being shown here. All three of them are very similar in nature. They're set up, this is the map screen, sort of the, the standard screen here for, for making calls, the call generation screen. And at the, in the top pane of each of these, you kind of get a, uh, you set up your user agents and place calls and, and so forth. And you'll, you'll get your standard ladder diagram there to the, to the bottom right or bottom left, and then a protocol decode of each of those messages. So it's it, they're all set up in the same manner, and this is just showing you for LTE, for SS7, and for SIP, they look almost identical. It's just the protocol's messaging is different, as you know. So some of the common features of this MAPS platform, um, and before I get into these a little bit, what I'm going to, just for the agenda purposes, Talking generically about maps right now at GL, um, a few more slides from now, I'm going to hand off to Savita, and she's going to actually talk about maps within this LCS environment, within the network. So you're going to get um, you're going to get some details and some and some instructions on on how we use maps to test these different elements in LCS. So again, common features with maps. Multi-protocol, I've mentioned that, multi-interface simulation. Um, it, at its core, it's a script-based uh, um, piece of software. Very, it's protocol independent in that nature, and the architecture allows it to, um, it, so, sort of the fundamental architecture allows it to be protocol independent, okay? Um, that's how we've set it up. We've got the ability with this thing to um, generate single calls to do a very specific test. Maybe you need to test a certain feature of your of your piece of equipment or your network, or it can do stress testing, okay? So, um, and it has abilities to do traffic handling. So you you need to send voice and data, or voice and, and tones and, and all types of things, or if you need to detect different things, it has the ability to do that um, within each call each session. Um, as I mentioned, it's a stress tester. If you set it up, you can set up a thousand different user agents in, in let's say, the SIP world, in the IP world, and you can you can stress test 
a switch, a network, a router, whatever you'd like. Um, it is script based. Uh, sometimes that scares people, but it's very easy, I'll say. It's very easy. It's sort of common sense, sort of script based. You don't need to be a C programmer to start using this thing. And um, we've built in some some test configurations to it, some off-the-shelf ones, but it's as customizable as you would want it to be. Um, so if you've got a sort of a whiz kid there who can who can do some of your programming for you, this thing can get extremely powerful with the way that you can. We've given access to to the product. Um, and you know, when I say that, I, you, you may first think, okay, maybe that's the state machine of the product. So when I send a certain message, I can predict, you know, I can, I can, I can wait a certain amount of time to send another message and so forth. All of that obviously is very script uh, driven and customizable as your heart is content. But it also has the ability to change the messages, okay, the messages themselves. So um, if I wanted to change a header, in the message, if I wanted to change it in a negative manner to see what the network or the piece of equipment that I'm testing and how it would respond to that, you have full flexibility at the at the message level, at the state machine of the protocol level, and um, and, and and all things around that. So uh, very flexible, um, very easy to use. And as I was mentioning uh, briefly, we have high density um, traffic simulation with MAPS. So MAPS itself can make one call if you'd like and test a certain sort of special case, sort of feature test, we'll call it. But it also has the ability to do um, very high density stress testing. So a typical, and we, we have listed here, a typical i7 platform, so it's all Windows based, uh, 2,000 concurrent RTP sessions uh, in in the SIP environment, SIP and IP environment. Now we also have the ability to add, uh, you know, our own sort of high density appliance there to it, and you can go up to 20,000 concurrent RTP sessions. So it's a high density product if you want it to be. It's a stress tester. Uh, if you want it to be. It's a feature tester if you want it to be. So it, it kind of floats around there on where we need it to, to be. But it, the platform itself, the MAPS platform, is, is sort of the basis for all of it. Okay, so again, one or two more slides here on what MAPS is, and then we'll specifically get into MAPS in LCS. Um, MAPS is inherently remote controllable. Okay, so you can set up multiple servers, and this is a little bit of a complex diagram, and so let me try to simplify it for you, but over on the server side, on the right-hand side, uh, you've got multiple servers running there, multiple uh, sort of um, server nodes, we'll call it. On the left-hand side, you can set up multiple clients, um, so user number one, user number two, and they have access to these servers, so it's all remote controllable in its nature. And from one uh, client system, if you'd like it to be, you can be controlling multiple servers sitting out there. So you can be um, you can be at one location, at one user interface. You can be controlling many network elements with with this architecture, and they're all in harmony with each other. Okay, multi-node, multi-unit, uh, multi-interface simulation from a single GUI. Um, technician in your lab can be using it, another technician can be using it as well, so they're sharing capabilities within the servers and so forth. So we have, we have, we've set it up in all of those sort of standard test equipment ways. And there's reasons for that, of course, but uh, uh, it allows for regression testing and so forth. Now, what I'm talking about here is basically GL's off-the-shelf client given to you. It's a GUI that we give to you put it on Windows, you use it. The next slide is MAPS itself has, we've opened it up from an API perspective, so you've got full access to MAPS, the engine of MAPS, and if you're so inclined, you can have someone write Python, Java, VB scripts, whatever, tickle scripts, so forth, to, 
to really exercise maps and maybe integrate it into some regression testing software that you may already have. So it has the ability. We've given we've given full access to it. It's you know down low. It's sort of our proprietary stuff, but we've given an API that sort of wraps it up, and that's what we're trying to show here. So the last slide for for maps. Um, generic maps here um, is our statistics and reporting. Um, what we can do here with uh, inherently built into maps are some reporting capabilities and some statistics. You have the ability as a user to, um, as if you were writing code where you can sort of put stops into code or, or test points into code, you have the ability to do those same things within maps. It's at a very simplified level, but you have the ability that if a certain message in the protocol comes in, I want to write an event to a log file. You can do those types of things. So it's 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 fully um, customizable from that perspective, and that's basically what we're trying to show here. Here we are going to concentrate on uh, Maps LCS products. What are the interfaces supported uh, within Maps, and uh, what are the procedures involved in these? interfaces and uh, how we are going to simulate. Uh, so coming to the interfaces supported, on uh, 2G network we support LB interface which is between BSC and SMLC and uh, on uh, uh, towards the network side we support LG and LH which is between uh, GMLC and HLR and uh, GMLC, MSC or SGSN respectively. On uh, 4G network, this uh, SLS is supported, which is between um, MME and SMLC. And uh, on uh, towards network side, it is uh, a maps diameter supporting SLH and SLG interfaces between uh, GMLC, HSS, and uh, GMLC MME. With this, we'll move on to the network architecture. Where are the, uh, what are the interfaces supported and how they look. So before going to that, uh, I, I will just introduce you how we are going to simulate this location service. So here basically there are uh, two methods. One is a conventional method where uh, the profiles are used, where the, the location information such as uh, altitude, longitude, uh, latitudes, these informations are stored in the CSV files and are fetched uh, at different instances of time to simulate different positions of the mobile. So coming to the LG, 2G architecture, the highlighted blue color icons, uh, blue color nodes shows the interfaces and uh, network elements involved in uh, 2G architecture. Here you can see GMLC, MSC supporting uh, LG interface, MSC and uh, GMLC supporting uh, again LG interface, SMLC, BSC supporting uh, LB and uh, GMLC and HLR supporting LH interfaces. So this shows you how the uh, message flows. So when any client contacts or requests for the services, the first entry point will be GMLC. That is gateway ML MLC. So, so this will uh, query the HLR to locate where the mobile is and the message is forwarded to the respective network. Now the uh, uh, in the network it reaches MSC. MSC will forward it to the mobile or the LMU to calculate the location parameters and it goes the flows goes through via SMLC. So coming to the actual uh, messages so here it, it gives you more uh, clear picture of uh, what are the messages transmitted between different nodes? So when the request is initiated from the LCS client, it reaches GMLC. GMLC queries HLR, gets the 
subscriber location uh, sorry the subscriber uh, information and forwards it to the respective msc msc will notify the mobile once the mobile is notified about the service the requests are forwarded to the bts or bsc to calculate the location parameters so the parameters are provided to smlc smlc is the node which is going to provide you the uh, coordinates where the exact uh, location of the mobile is that is sent the information is sent in the location response message and it is given to the client the message is forwarded to the client coming to the 3g architecture here as we have seen in the 2g the nodes are same except this rnc towards the access network and it communicates with the sas that is a stand alone smlc which is going to calculate uh, positioning parameters and the interfaces here uh, are same in the uh, towards network side as we have seen in the 2g but on the access side it is uh, from rnc to sas we use iupc this is the only difference uh, in 3g network and here also the flow is same it requests it contacts gateway msc then it is forwarded to the respective msc and here the rnc is going to contact uh, msc and uh, sas that is uh, stand alone smlc coming to the 4g architecture here uh, the nodes are gmlc hss for slh interface gmlc mme for slg and esmlc mme for sls so savita if if i may interrupt you just for one second on that slide um you may you may have mentioned it and i did not hear it um earlier when you have the gl in in each of these boxes here where hss and gmlc uh, i see down at the bottom you've got the diagram that or the key says that's where maps can be so are you are you indicating with those gls that maps as a product can be emulating those nodes or those elements is that is that correct yes the highlighted things which shows the gl icon Uh, those are the interfaces and those are the nodes which we are going to, which gl is going to simulate so here uh, any one of the node can be replaced with a real network node or uh, the entire thing all the interfaces are used by the gl only to simulate end to end call flows also so here uh, the wrap around testing or uh, the loop back testing those kinds of Uh, different kinds of testing can be achieved uh, as we support all the interfaces whatever shown in the diagram okay yeah okay thank you so coming to the uh, call flow uh, here uh, here also the entry point is gmlc but it contacts hss on uh, 4g network to get the subscriber information once the information is received it is forwarded to the respective mme and uh, then through uh, e smlc we are uh, calculating the positioning parameter uh, we are getting the positioning parameters from the e smlc it is uh, smlc but enhanced for the 4g networks coming to the call flow it is exactly same as uh, uh 2g or 3g architecture but uh, the messages uh, are different uh, in 4g network so here uh, the, the protocol also differs here uh, in the previous slides we have seen uh, uh, lb and uh, iupc interfaces and here it is uh, sls interface and uh, the protocol is ll lpp protocol here and uh, the messages are uh, the request is forwarded to gmlc then hss then uh, given to e smlc which in turn requests e node b for the parameters 
then ESMLC will identify the coordinates and it will provide in the response. So with this uh, brief uh, introduction about the MAPS LCS products, I would like to uh, go over the live demo uh, where we can see how exactly uh, we are going to simulate uh, these things. So as we have earlier seen the 2G architecture, wherever uh, the uh, maps icons you can see uh, are simulated by the uh, GLS maps application. So now I am going to show you uh, maps LB interface. So here maps LB interface uh, is between SMLC and BSC. The screen shows you MS SMLC configurations where uh, we are going to configure IP addresses, uh, SMLC, BSC IP addresses, then point codes, and then MTP parameters are configured. Similarly, in the BSC node, we are going to configure IP address, PLMN identifiers, SMLC parameters, ports, and point codes. Now, uh, we'll start the test bed for both the nodes to make a SETP link up. So once the SCTP is up, we can see the basic uh, lower layer procedures like m 3 and SEMGs are uh, active. And now the application is ready to simulate a LB interface that is uh, uh, over this uh, SCTP layer. So here, um, before going to the simulation, uh, as I have said uh, earlier, we are we are going to have a profiles where the uh, location parameters are configured. So the profile contains different uh, parameters. Uh, the all the parameters we have configured here. You can see the degree of latitude, longitude, uncertainty codes, and the different shapes like. Um, if we are going to identify uh, more than one points, like a polygonal shape we are going to identify, then we are going to say how many points and uh, the uh, latitude and longitude of each points can be configured in the profiles. We have another method that is a CSV method where uh, this will allow the user to provide multiple location parameters, whereas the profile is having only one location parameter. So the screen, you can see multiple entries of these parameters. And uh, they are fetched from the uh, CSV. These values are fetched from the CSV at different intervals of time, which can simulate the mobile is having at different locations. So now uh, to simulate uh, actual calls, so uh, it is initiated from the BSC. We'll start script here. Once the script is started, you can see the messages sent to the DUT or uh, the end node, and it is having it is requesting for the type of the location and um, type of the method, and based on the method, the request is sent to the SMLC for asking a timing advance. And in the response, we got a timing advance of that mobile at that point of time. So another request is sent with some period. And uh, if the location is changed from the previous location, then the reset message is sent informing the mobile location has been changed. And at this point, SMLC will send the response of the uh, location response to the mobile, indicating the current latitude and longitude of the uh, mobile. So this is how the call flow is achieved using the MAPS application. Let us Okay, go. very good. Thank you, Savita. Thank you very much. That was, that was nice. So um, I guess a question real quick from me is you mentioned you showed that CSV file there. And um, I think I picked up that you, um, you're mentioning that that is used by our program to uh, sort of simulate a mobile on the move, right? Is that, is that, is that how that is? It, it picks up these coordinates or the parameters from the CSV at, a, at some interval? Is that how that works? Correct, yes. 
Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, do you support AGPS call flow? Okay, Savita. Yeah, AGPS call flows. Uh, again, it is one of the location method uh, used. Yeah, uh, we need a specification means what uh, exactly they are looking for that. Uh, we are not doing any calculations here, but uh, we do support that procedure. Uh, here it is uh, means actually the parameters are provided in the CSV file instead of uh, calculating and uh, based on the uh, AGPS method what are the parameters we need to access those parameters will be configured in the CSV file and uh, the procedure is simulated uh, 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 with uh, there are different methods uh, how we do it so uh, we do support AGPSs, but we need more uh, information. How they, what they are looking for. Okay, okay. Uh, Deepthi, I am going to unmute you. You can just ask your question. Hello, Deepthi. I want to know that. Uh, hello, hi. Uh, I would like to know that uh, for LTE uh, on SLS interface, or what protocols are supported? Uh, do you support LPP and LPPA protocols? Yes, uh, we support uh, LPP protocols. Uh, the current phase has uh, very basic uh, procedures, but uh, yeah, we can elaborate, we can extend it to support uh, any of the procedures as per the specification. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Yusuf. Hello. Yeah. Please ask uh, okay. question. Uh, okay. I wanted to ask. I didn't really get what the CSV file is. Do I get it as a result, or do I have to configure it? Uh, yeah, we are configuring this. Uh, this is a pre-configured file. You have to configure with uh, different parameters, uh, and uh, as per your requirement, you can configure and you can. Uh, Simulate. So I mean, uh, San, uh, Savita, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but so this is a file uh, when we're emulating or simulating uh, the node that's responsible for providing the location, we can uh, we can have this CSV file sitting there behind the scenes that is um, sort of we're moving through at a certain interval, and when a request comes in for a location we provide that location based on the CSV file. So it's our way of show, it's our way of sort of varying that response, uh, sort of emulating a true mobile moving. Um, I believe that's what's going on there. Is that right, Savita? Yes, ma'am, correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, we have another question. Which maps applications are being used by various customers? So, uh, our maps maps is is very widely used. Many different protocols uh, like that we showed there on the screen. Um, basically, uh, you know, how is it being used? Maybe is the question. But I think typically what what our customers are using it for it, there's a variety of things and I, I think I mentioned specific issue testing or sort of functional testing of, of specific features um, you know uh, what happens when my uh, router responds to this SIP invite message and in you know how does it respond in a certain way maybe there's a slight parameter change in a header we can we can make that change we can throw that invite toward the router and see how it responds. So we can do very specific testing in that sense. Um, it also, a lot of our customers are, are purchasing maps and then configuring maps and writing scripts for maps to do regression testing. So they have a product, um, uh, let's just make it simple, they have a switch or something and they want to, uh, or a router, and they and they're selling that commercially, and they want to put our product, you know, on the basically at the end of the assembly line to make sure that their product is adhering to some, you know, passing some initial tests there before it goes out the door. So 
and, and maybe a new firmware is being loaded on their product. So they set up our product to do this regression testing. They can they can repeat that testing, you know, from you know today, two months from now, a year from now. It's just the same thing. So that, that that's another way regression testing in the lab or on the assembly line or you know on the production line, as well as I mean a, a real main com a component of it is true bulk calling or true you know stress testing, and that spans across the protocol. So you can have uh, eight PRI ISDN T1 links, and we can we can send out calls on you know 23 times eight channels or time slots, you know, simultaneously, see what happens, to, you know, making thousands of SIP calls or requests and so forth. So uh, a true load testing, stress testing in the lab or maybe even out when you're deploying something. So there's a variety of ways that people have been using it, um, as well as in the, in the lab for simulating different nodes that they may not have. Maybe they have Maybe they're a seller of, of a certain node in a network, and they want to simulate another node to, to test that. And, you know, the research and development guys want to do that. So that, that's where it gets used a lot. So it's, it's across the board. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have another question. Uh, he's asking, uh, can we trust the lat-long data from this system? Can we trust the lat-long data from the system? Yeah. Well, again, it's okay. So, you know, this is this is a piece of simulation equipment. So the lat long data that we're—I mean, if we're the guy providing the lat long data, we're going to be providing whatever has been programmed into our into our program to provide. So, um, yes, if. If if you're if you're a, if you're another node in the in the network where you're you have privy to to the lat long information coming from a real uh, server, then yes, we're just going to show that. I mean, Savita, can you comment on that a little bit? I'm not sure. I think the answer is yes. I don't. I don't. It's not going to. It's not going to report anything that's not true. Uh, if it's it's getting the lat long information it's going to show it um, and if we're a provider of the lat long information in a, in a certain test scenario then we're going to provide whatever you've told us to provide okay. yeah only the configured things we, we can configure the things we are not uh, accessing it from uh, uh, the GPS uh, right Yeah, we have a couple of questions from another customer. I'll just unmute him. Hello. Please ask your question. Yeah, let me read out his question. Can we, how can we simulate the assistance data for a AGPS? Yeah, it is again uh, a configuration. Yeah, it is again a configuration provided in CSV file uh, or a profile. So whenever the request comes with the uh, uh, AGPSS method, uh, we are going to fetch this CSV which matches with the uh, AGPSS parameters, and we are going to parameter. Uh, uh, on, we are going to in the response we are going to provide only uh, the parameters associated with this assisted. Uh, GPS methods. So the CSV will be having, uh, we can configure anything in the CSV. Uh, all the uh, methods, parameters related to all the methods will be configured in the CSV file. And based on the request, we are going to filter out only those parameters. Means that is, we are going to fetch only those parameters from the CSV and uh, it is given to the uh, uh, requested uh, entity. So basically, everything will be configured in the CSV file. Yeah, we have one Can last question to take. Uh, somebody is asking, uh, Maps product can integrate with 
external eSMLC or it should be configured with within maps only to perform the simulation. With uh, his his uh, um, if it is need, if it needs to be configured with his uh, uh, network, then there should be again an interface to uh, uh, means uh, we can have this uh, uh, maps APIs uh, APIs to integrate with their environment, uh, or else we can connect it to their network, uh, which will act as another end entity. Uh, if it is going to be connected to SMLC. It will be another end uh, like uh, HSS, uh, HLR, or uh, um, uh, RNC, or uh, uh, th th the other entities. It can be act acted as other entity, and uh, we can simulate a confluence. If it is integrated within their network, then uh, there should be uh, the high level APIs has to be provided, and uh, with that, with that we can control their device. Okay, thank you, Savita. Thank you, Matt. Yep, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Savita. Thanks, Sanjeev. And I'll just uh, close by saying, you know, if, if we need to address some additional questions there or get into some more details there, you know, please contact us. Um, we can um, we can make that we can make that happen. We can get you to the right people to answer those questions and and so forth. So please let us know if you have any more questions offline. Thank you for your time today. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.